So if you could fill out the welcome sheets and pass those along to your neighbors in the row. As you can tell today, we will be celebrating the blessing of the animals, and uh, we see that we have a few animal friends with us today. Um, I want to give thanks to uh, Lisa as well as others who are setting up uh, this morning, especially the Holy Hot Dog Stand that will be available after the service. Um, and, um, and so hopefully you'll take advantage of that. I also want to give uh, a thanks to Pastor Nicole. Uh, Pastor Nicole put this service together last year. Um, I've done some revisions to it, but I want to thank her for the hard work she put in for this particular service, not only for last year, for this year as well. Also wanted to let you know that for those of you with pets, if you're having any problems with the pets, you're welcome to go out into the atrium, but you're also welcome to keep them here in the sanctuary. Uh, but if you need to go out in the atrium, that's fine until the time of the blessing. The blessing will be later in the service, and, um, and uh, hopefully everything will work out until then. This is just great. This is wonderful. Uh, for those of you who have animals but didn't bring them with you, we have a little green sheet with a blessing on it uh, that you can pick up after the service if you would like, or you could come up forward and just receive a blessing uh, to take home with you. For those who are able, please stand for the call to worship. <laughs> Jesus, our Lord, we assemble with all your creatures in this circle of life. Thank you for your presence with us as we celebrate the gift of love. Jesus, our Christ, as we join in celebration with you and all creation. We ask for your blessing, for your shalom, on the creatures present here, to be ourselves included, and on all creatures celebrating your love and holiness with the Lord God. In the name of God who creates all life, in the name of Jesus Christ who redeems all life, and in the name of the Spirit, who renews all life, we cry out now with all the circle of life. Shalom, shalom, shalom. May your blessing come. Hebrew lesson is Isaiah chapter 11, starting at verse 1. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meat of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, 
The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fat one together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand in the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. There ends our first reading. Our gospel lesson this morning is found in the gospel according to Matthew in the sixth chapter and beginning with the 25th verse. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to the span of your life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. 
They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, and is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what shall we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things. And indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. May God add a reading add a blessing to the reading of God's holy word. Well, today as we all can see and we all can smell a little bit and we all can hear, it is indeed a special day, a day in which we bless the animals, which are also our friends, our family members, our fellow companions in this journey of life and faith. The blessing of the animals, as you may know, is connected to St. Francis. And typically, churches around the world will celebrate this kind of service on or near the Feast of St. Francis, which is October 4th. Now, I was thinking of doing the same thing, having it at a service close to October 4th. And so I was thinking we could celebrate this day on October 1st, but that's World Communion Sunday. And mixing pets with any kind of food just seemed like a really not very good idea. I was away the 8th, and so the elders Elaine and I decided to go with today, so here we are. Today we bring our pets, or we'll take a blessing back to them, because we indeed feel a bond with our pets that is often so difficult to explain. And for those who have pets, or who have just a connection to animals, or just feel joy when they encounter God's creation, we indeed have a special and spiritual friend in St. Francis, whose legacy speaks of a close bond with animals and with all of creation itself. Now, there's a few stories about St. Francis and animals that are fun and speak of this close bond that he had. I shared one with you last year when we had Blessing of the Animals, and I'd like to share a few more with you this morning. One story goes that there was a time when St. Francis was traveling by boat on a lake. When he arrived at the port, someone offered him a large fish that was still alive. Calling it brother in his usual way, Francis put the fish back into the water next to the boat. And the fish kept playing in the water in front of the saint, delighting in everything that it did, which made St. Francis very happy. And because of that happiness, he began to praise Christ the Lord. And the fish did not leave that spot until it was commanded by Francis to leave. And one more. When Blessed Francis fleeing, as was his custom, from the sight of human company, He came to stay in a certain hermitage. A falcon nesting there bound itself to him in a great covenant of friendship. At nighttime, with its calling and noise, the falcon anticipated the hour when the saint would usually rise for the divine prayers. The Holy One was very grateful for this because, because of the falcon's great concern, it often shook him out of any lazy sleeping in. But when the saint was burdened more than usual by some illness, the falcon would spare him and would not announce such early vigils. As if instructed by God, the falcon would ring the bell of its voice with a light touch about dawn. Now, Sally's and my dog, Radar, often wakes us up, too. Not so we can get to our prayers on time, but for, well, you know. There are so many times that a dog or other pets have only in mind their own needs, especially when they are hungry, or they need to go outside, or they want to walk, or a run, or they just want it to be pet. But we also know, as expressed in these stories about St. Francis, that pets and animals also bring us joy and friendship and companionship. 
These stories speak of happiness and praise to Christ because of animals. They do indeed speak of friendship and care. And for those with pets, we enjoy a bond that often describes them in terms of affection and relationship and love. And I know that as a pet owner myself, how important they are to our lives, and not only to our lives of those who have pets, but the lives of those whom they also touch. They are so often a comfort when you're feeling down or lonely. And they have their own special way of acting when they see you or greet you when they come home. Radar, my dog, which is a little one, leaps up about this high. I can't tell you how good that feels. But it's not just our pets. When we see deer in the woods or birds at a feeder or wild turkeys and their young walking across our driveway, it just causes deep feelings of joy and gratitude in our hearts. And if you ever want to have great fun seeing some unique animals, go to the alpaca days at the Hunsicker's farm. Man, can I tell you that's fun. But we gather for this special day not just because a few of us are animal nuts, even though a few of us are indeed animal nuts. We celebrate this day because animals and birds and fish are prominent throughout Scripture. They are part of God's creation. They speak to us when we need them to speak to us. Who can forget the stories in the Bible? Jonah and the whale. And Scripture tells us that those who wait for the Lord will renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. A passage that offers us lessons about our relationship with God. And in our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus speaks of God's care for us by first talking about God's care for the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. And in the Isaiah passage today, one of my favorite passages in Scripture, we have the image of what we often call the peaceable kingdom and describing the hope for the world for us, a hope that God will indeed bring into this world to bring into this broken world. The prophet lets us know that animals are a key part of the harmony and peace that God intends for us and all of creation. It's a passage that we often read during Advent when we anticipate the coming of the Christ child. And we can all probably recite the well-known part of this scripture passage where it says, The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. But I think it's even greater than that. As Paul once said in his letter to the Romans, our destiny, our salvation, everything about us is tied up to creation itself. We know that the whole of creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, he writes. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. You see, when God created, God created not just us, but God created all of that that we enjoy and see out there. God created these beautiful animals that are with us this morning. God created relationship, not only between each other, but also relationship with the very creation itself. And all of us together, all of us together shall see the salvation of God. I think that stories about animals and birds and fish or about creation or about relationships with pets all tell us something important about ourselves and about our faith. They tell us that we are all created by God for a purpose and that our care for one another and our care even for our pets and our animals and for creation itself is an integral part of our faith. These stories, these animals, these loved ones tell us that our lives are to be lived in praise to God, who gives us life, who blesses our relationships, 
and who gives us the gifts of special ones in our life that bring us joy. And for that, today and in the days ahead, we indeed give God thanks and praise. Amen. Holy God, our Creator, to you we offer our praise and glory and honor. To you alone do all things belong. We give you thanks for giving us the animals and the birds and the fish which fill our world. May we think of you and thank you when we play and care for our pets. We ask you, O Lord, that we may be good to our animals and to your creation always, so that they and we might be at peace. Help us always to take care of creation as you have commanded us to do. We pray for all creatures today, Lord, whether they be people or animals, and we ask that you hear the concerns for both on our hearts this morning. Hear us, O God, as we pray in silence. O God, the world you created is full of blessings. May we strive to live as faithful stewards in your world. Keep us mindful of the kingdom to come, where we shall experience your mercy and peace in ways beyond our imagination. But until that time, O oh God, nurture our lives with your grace. These things we ask in the name of your Son. Amen. Let's join in the responsive prayer in your bulletin. Let us give thanks to God for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us, for the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord. For the richness of the mountains, plains, and rivers. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women. We thank you, Lord. For all creatures that breathe and move and have life. We thank you, Lord. For the songs of the birds and the loveliness of flowers and trees. We thank you, Lord. For the trust you have shown in giving into our care these, our pets. We thank you, Lord. That each pet here may be treasured with care. We pray to you, Lord. That where abuse and neglect exist, that suffering ends and that kindness reigns. We pray to you, Lord. That those who extend care to your animals, especially those at Last Chance Ranch and other rescue organizations, be strengthened in their work and their mission. We pray to you, Lord. That we may love and honor all your works, O oh God. We pray to you, Lord. That we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation. To the honor and glory of your name, now and forever, we pray to you, Lord. Amen. And now let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I invite uh, those with pets to come forward uh, for a blessing. If you do not have pets here this morning but would like a, a blessing to take home, we have those as well. Um, and if you need to remain in your seat and need us to come out to you, just raise your hand at the end and we'll come out and do that. So now please... Please come forward with your pets for a blessing. There we go. Finally.
Our animals have been blessed today, and we have indeed received a blessing by being in the presence of one another as God's creation, created indeed to love one another, created indeed to go out into the world to love the world that God has created.